The day begins early for trading company worker Ken Nishitsu, as it does for most Japanese. A bachelor, Ken lives alone in a tiny two-room apartment about 40 minutes from his office. His neighborhood looks like most Japanese cities, where apartment living has become dominant in recent years. With his busy schedule, Ken likes to listen to jazz music whenever he can, even when he's shaving. In another part of the city, TV director Motoko Kurihara is paying a lot of attention to her face, too. She has to be careful about her appearance because she's in the entertainment world. She can also take her time because rehearsals won't start until mid-afternoon. In a suburb of the city, the day's also beginning for electronics worker Yukio Kakeuchi. He lives in a company dormitory so close to his job that he can walk there with his friends. Motoko and her husband, who's a TV producer, are luckier than most Japanese. They live in their own home and can spend a leisurely morning together. A cup of tea, the morning paper. Ken's already read his newspaper on the subway, which has taken him to the heart of a major business district where he walks to work with thousands of others in the world's largest city, Tokyo. Quite a contrast to Yukio and his friends outside the city, who finish their stroll from dormitory to laboratory in just a few minutes. It's one reason why more and more Japanese prefer to live and work outside the city. Ken reaches his office right on time. It's Friday, and he's looking forward to a two-day weekend off, thanks to a new trend toward a shorter work week in Japan. For Motoko, her time off sometimes comes on a pleasant weekday morning when she often goes to a nearby park. She likes to sketch landmarks in Tokyo. A relaxing contrast to her busy television schedule, the perfect setting for a creative person. Creativity is also a key word at Yukio's electronics plant where the main product is transistors. Yukio is a quality control specialist. He checks transistors with a high-powered microscope, always looking for ways to improve the product. Like many workers in Japan, he thinks of himself as part of a company team. The team includes many women who can work thanks to a company school that cares for their youngsters. One added benefit for the children is learning English at no expense to their parents. Window. Strawberry jam spoon. Okay. Japanese companies believe in education on the job, too. Off the job, employees can take advantage of free company-operated classes. And they include flower arrangement. Industrial design. Or perhaps a course in how to style and make their own clothing. For Ken, his learning is on the job. His trading company has worldwide offices with almost instant communications through a global telex system. This message will reach the company's office in London almost as quickly as it takes Ken to deliver it to the telex room. The pace of Matoko's day is quickening, too. After her leisurely morning, she has to shop at a local supermarket for the dinner she and her husband will share late that night. Even though Motoko is a career woman, she has responsibilities at home. She must pay close attention to food prices because she handles the family budget. After a quick trip home to drop off her groceries, she continues on to work a few minutes' drive away. Motoko's television company is one of the largest and most modern in Japan, or in the world. While Motoko is just getting to work, it's midday at Yukio's plant. And noontime means just one thing, lunch. A wash-up before eating is common in Japan, where cleanliness is a national characteristic. One benefit of working for the company is inexpensive food. Yukio's lunch, a full, well-balanced meal, costs him less than a dollar. It's another way the company helps his workers cope with the rising cost of living. It's the same story for Ken, who often eats lunch in his company's cafeteria, but there's a second reason. 
He enjoys good food and good friends. Being together and enjoying it is a natural part of life for most Japanese. Team spirit is more than a slogan. Even in their spare time after lunch, workers stay together, relaxing or playing a little volleyball. It's not Yukio's strongest sport. He enjoys skiing and he's learning to play golf. But there's nothing like a little volleyball to meet new friends. Exercise takes a different form inside the office, where in mid-afternoon, many companies interrupt work for a few minutes of music and motion. Not everyone exercises, but those who do say it's a pleasant, relaxing break, which is precisely the idea. For most Japanese, work is important, but it's not the only thing. Young women in Ken's company operate modern machines during the day, but later on, there's an entirely different move. The same employees who operate computers and automated machines appreciate the somber mood of an ancient cultural ceremony. It's difficult to believe that a quiet, traditional place like this tea ceremony room could be found inside of a modern office building. You never know from the outside what's on the inside. And it's very much the same with the Japanese. Wearing their company uniforms, young women prepare and serve tea the way it's been done for centuries. For these women, it's much more than a company benefit. It's an inner satisfaction, a beautiful mood that is peaceful, gracious, and shared. It's quite a different mood where Motoko works. Before rehearsals begin, she listens to music that will be used on her show. It's an important part of her job because the success of the program depends on her knowledge of what's popular among the younger generation. Before she goes to the soundstage for rehearsals, Motoko has time to glance at some fan mail that includes some pretty fancy artwork. And there always are last minute script changes must be rechecked and approved. Just before rehearsals begin, she views some videotapes of another show to make sure it's edited the way she wants. This all is part of a careful approach to her work, an attitude that's important to most Japanese and something Motoko has learned in her 10 years as a director. The audience can relax and enjoy the music. But showtime is work time for Motoko. Musical entertainment in Japan is dominated by the young and their young fans. The music and styles are very much like those in Europe or America. Motoko's advice is important to the young stars who have to improve if they expect to keep their popularity. Like so many things in Japan, popular music requires plenty of teamwork. This may not seem like the time and place for teamwork, but when Ken and his friends go out to a bar after work, it's an important part of their feelings as an office team. It's a time for relaxation and fun for getting closer together. It's a time to eat as well as drink. The happy combination of food and talk makes a bar one of the most sociable places in any Japanese city or town. Nobody has to pour his own drink. Young people who come here use the bar as a meeting place. For them, their greatest pleasure is being together. Just as Motoko and Ken have their outside interests, Yukio likes a change of pace too when he's finished work for the day.
His bachelor apartment is filled with posters, stereo equipment, and music. Like so many Japanese, Yukio loves Western classical music. It provides a relaxing background, whether he's reading a book, writing a letter, or just dreaming. poster show, Yukio likes a variety of things. It could be the classics, the Beatles, or the Mountains. For Ken, his interests have narrowed down a bit, and the reason is obvious. On Sunday, Ken almost always has a date with his fiancée. They met in college. When he's saved enough money, they'll be married. reason they like city life is that there are so many things for them to enjoy together. It doesn't cost anything to look at the bargains offered by popular street artists. For Ken, for all Japanese, life is filled with rapid change, just as the face of the city is changing. One thing doesn't change, the bright enthusiasm for work and for fun shared by young Japanese every 24 hours in Japan. 